Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back for another week's edition of the Future Quake Show. Here we are. I'm Dr. Future. And I'm Tom Bionic. And it's wonderful to have you back again. Again, another week, another new edition, and another new guest we're going to have. And this week we have a fantastic guest. We have Brother Chris Pinto, who is the founder of Adullam Productions, who is a writer and documentary filmmaker. Yes, he is. I'll tell you, um, his films, especially Riddles and Stone, really, really changed my world view. Um, I think today we're going to be talking a little bit about his his current film. We're probably going to be talking a little bit about his uh, 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 some of his past films, some of his work. Uh, he knows a lot about Freemasonry that I think a lot of Christians really should... Uh, consider and to take, you know, just to at least listen mm-hmm. to what he has to say at the very least. Well, he knows so much about so many things, and those of us who have reviewed his um, documentary so far, and they're mm-hmm. very extensive, yes. he uncovers so much unique information about so many topics mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that uh, I don't know anyone who hasn't watched his work and been amazed, not been amazed by what oh, they've yeah. seen. yeah, consistently people I know that I, you know, I loan them about it or they hear about it and go and see it, they always come back and they say, I never knew that. Mm-hmm. And this gentleman doesn't toot his horn a lot, but uh, his uh, work has been even acknowledged by the secular media because of the quality of the work that he does. It's great. He is a he is a, a strong, committed Christian, but he doesn't just leave it. He he backs it up with solid evidence and hard uh, hard facts and stuff to his work. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that's I really appreciate that. Right. I, I mean, he achieves excellence in oh, his work. Absolutely. And. Uh, whether it's uh, film critics in New York or L.A. or others that give him various awards for his mm-hmm. work, uh, what we really appreciate is the content mm-hmm. and what he has to say that particularly believers need to hear. Yeah. But uh, as we'll talk about it, it's a, it's a tremendous way for even uh, people who aren't believers to And hear. this might be a way to, to sort of minister to some people, you know, to, mm-hmm. to bring in non-Christians. Right. To, uh, and that's something he talks a little bit about um, you know, you get the you get the DVD set, and it kind of goes through this progression, and you can kind of look at it and get a sense of like where things are going. Mm-hmm. You know? Well, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're able to tune in all week to hear the entire uh, the entire interview that we have with Chris Pinto that will be playing Monday through Thursday. But in the meantime, we'd like to hear from you and to hear any of the shows, including shows you may miss. You might want to catch out our new announcer that we have. Oh yeah, hey Merv. And uh, we are going to have uh, some announcements actually done about how you can catch the rest of the shows at futurequake.com. So announce away. Future Quake radio broadcasts are archived at www.futurequake.com, suitable for downloading or streaming, as well as other show information. Okay, thank you very much for that word. Right on, bro. And Sounded better than ever. We're, uh, we're glad to uh, have that addition to our yeah. show now. Uh, we also uh, want to give him an opportunity to uh, let our listeners know how they can give feedback to us uh, via, the inter- via the email. Yeah. Uh, we'd like to have some email accounts. So he's going to share with you a little bit about how you can get your feedback back to us. Email Dr. Future and Tom Bionic at drfuture at futurequake.com. That's D-R-F-U-T-U-R-E at futurequake.com. Tell us your name, city, and radio station or internet, and if we can use your name on air. Comments on the show's topics or guests or suggestions for future show topics or guests are most welcome. Dr. Future and Tom will discuss selected emails each week during the radio broadcast. Okay, so with let's, let's jump in, man. No further ado, I think we need to jump into it, ladies and gentlemen. I think you'll really enjoy this. Listen very carefully; you're going to learn something. Uh, and we're cutting away to our interview with Chris Pinto, and we're going to talk about all sorts of fascinating things he's done in his documentaries. Ladies and gentlemen, it's great to have you at the Future Quake Show. Uh, we have our guest tonight, uh, Chris Pinto, who is the founder of Adullam Films and a uh, writer and documentary filmmaker, with us tonight to uh, talk about a number of subjects, including the secret origins of America and its future destiny, and a number of other projects that he's been involved with. Uh, Chris, it's wonderful to have you on the Future Quake Show. Well, thanks for having me, uh, Dr. Future. It's great to be here. I think I've been on once before, haven't I? That's right. And we got so much feedback on that. Uh, I know a lot of people went and wanted to get your documentaries when they heard a little bit of the subject area, what you covered, and and we cannot uh, encourage people any stronger uh, to go on and get a hold of your materials. They were great. They were were shockers. They were eye-opening. And I hope uh, we can cover at least a little bit of our material in our discussion uh, with you now. 
and we actually uh, give people at least a little bit of a taste to uh, get them interested in finding out more about the subject area that you cover with your Christian documentaries. Uh, to kick things off a little bit, could you uh, share with us briefly a little bit about your background and, for example, how you came to know the Lord and how you developed an interest in the cinema and documentaries in particular? Well, I was a, uh, you know, when I, when I got out of high school, I went to acting school. And that was initially my interest, to, to get involved in acting. And I, I did a lot of work on stage and so on. And then got into writing and directing when I was uh, going to school in North Carolina, at the North Carolina School of the Arts. And got into writing plays and eventually screenplays. And then I got into independent filmmaking in my early 20s and spent the better part of uh, really most all of my 20s trying to pursue a career in, in filmmaking, independent filmmaking primarily. And had a, did, just did a lot of writing and so on, but I was pursuing it all from a very uh, selfish, uh, you know, desire to get get fame and fortune and glory for myself perspective. And uh, and then when I was about 30, I came to know the Lord. I got saved, um, began to to study the Bible, and uh, and the Lord Jesus Christ really turned my life around. I became a new person and and left the old things behind. And uh, really didn't know what the Lord wanted me to do. Uh, in fact, I had really let go of all of my creative ambitions and uh, uh, was just, just ready to do whatever God wanted me to do. But he soon turned me around and, uh, and showed me that he had given me whatever talents that I have uh, ultimately to serve and, and to glorify him. So I set about trying to uh, uh, figure out what sort of a Christian filmmaker I might be. I ended up moving. I was in New York when I got saved, but I ended up moving out to Los Angeles. And uh, a few years later, um, now this was New York City. Yeah, I was in New York okay. City. I was in in Manhattan on the Upper East Side, hmm. uh, about a about a block and a half from the East River, where I used to go running every day. Uh, beautiful up there, but uh, you know, New York's a strange place. There's a lot of you know, people often think <laughs> As about. An understatement. Yeah, they, they often think about the crime there, or they'll think about you know the the world worldliness of it. They'll see it as a kind of Babylon kind of setting. But what you don't realize until you live there is 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 the uh, the tremendous amount of faith that a core number of people have where God is concerned, because things life is so hard there. I, mm-hmm. I was usually surprised when I. Uh, first became a, a Christian and started going to the local Christian bookstore that was there um, in Midtown. And I was always amazed at how that place was packed. And there were just so many people in there who were looking for materials, who seemed to be hungry uh, to learn something uh, you know, that would help them get through their day-to-day lives. You see people on the subways working till 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning these are often people who have hard lives, and, and when people are in that position, they quite often cry out to God and trust in Him because they have to. Um, and so I, that that was a very surprising side to... Uh, you you to know, that's not what we see on TV, though, Chris. No. We see the fast-paced lifestyle of New York City, right. and we see all the wonderful life and excitement, you know, as opposed to flyover country, like here, you know, where people just live in cornfields and have nothing to do or entertain themselves but but you know, like they say the cities <laughs> the cities really are a jungle and it, it almost is sort of a dog eat dog and a harsh lifestyle just to try to stay ahead well that's certainly true and, and I think that that is the element that dominates a place like Manhattan there's no question about it but you would be surprised at how uh, in in times of desperation there are people people there really do reach out, I believe. I, I can't say that's the majority of the people. It certainly happened for me that way, and I did mm-hmm. meet other people uh, who were uh, who were experiencing the same thing. Um, because you sort of come to, when, when you're in a place like Manhattan, it's such a hard place to live. It's almost like boot camp for life to be there. Um, you, 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 you will either become rich and famous, or you come to the end of yourself, as it were. Uh, you get really broken down when your ambitions fail, and that was certainly the case for me. But that's where the Lord met me, and that's where the Lord turned turned me about and showed me that the path I was taking, you know, for myself and my own selfish desires was vain and ultimately would come to nothing. 
uh, and that anything I did apart from him uh, was, was really a waste of time. And, uh, and, and that's where my, my conversion began. It was when I laid down my arms, as it were, and I said, okay, Lord, what would you have me to do? And if it had not been for that, you could still be uh, kicking around in New York City making some forgettable productions that may not have any kind of impact on anybody whatsoever. Right, or or have all the wrong kinds of impact on on people. <laughs> you know, have yeah. have the kind of impact that inspire people toward, you know, godless lives and so on. Which is was certainly, I mean, looking back now, that was the kind of material I would write. You know, it's stuff that I wouldn't have in my house today. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And and eventually, it took me a while, but I eventually <laughs> took all the scripts that I had written and threw them out. Um, because I, I realized these things just did not glorify God. Uh, so, so anyway, but, but all of that was a journey that took quite a few years to uh, uh, to get through and understand those things. But then the Lord turned me about, and uh, and initially I wanted to, to uh, write and direct and produce dramatic narratives, uh, fictional works and things like that, and I still have that desire somewhat. But I came into uh, contact with um, a Christian presentation called Rock and Roll Sorcerers of the New Age Revolution by Pastor <laughs> Joe Schimmel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a it's kind of a it's kind of a bizarre title, but it was it dealt with the music industry. Mm-hmm. And Pastor Joe, his background was as a musician who who tapped into occult powers while he was pursuing his musical career and came to uh, realize what he had done and then through that experience became a Christian and got saved and then began studying the music industry and and the satanic elements that exist in rock music and then also pop music and he had this whole presentation and it was very interesting because it wasn't just about music he was talking about how he was was talking about Bible prophecy about Hmm. the uh, how prophecy talks about there will be eventually a, a world order, a world government, a world economy, a one world leader, uh, and that the world would be unified eventually in a, in a common cause, and that this unification movement would ultimately be the kingdom of Antichrist. And I had never, you know, even though I'd been a Christian for a number of years and I read my Bible every day, I had never understood the prophecies that I read in terms of, I never thought of them in terms of modern history. I guess I always figured they would be things that would happen later on. You right. Know? Yeah. And here was somebody who was saying, well, these things are happening now. They're unfolding right now. And I was really amazed by it and began from there to study this thing that I'd heard about called the New World Order that I didn't know anything about back then um, and the New Age movement and so on. Now, you were still pursuing your cinematic efforts at this time in another vein? Well, this time, by, at this point, I'd been a Christian for several years. I'd moved to Los Angeles and was trying to figure out what the Lord, you know, what sort of work I would do uh, for God. I was involved in a church. I would write, uh, you know, uh, dramatic productions based upon biblical stories and things like that and do the you know and then direct them at the church as kind of church presentations and so on um but i i still wanted to pursue filmmaking i just didn't exactly know what i would uh what i would produce and um so then about that time i i fell into this subject matter and began to research it and as i sought the lord and prayed about it you know i was inquiring you know would should I make a documentary about this kind of thing? I'd always loved the documentary format. And uh, and so seemed to get approval. And as I would step out on things, doors would open and opportunities were presented. And so uh, I began to move forward. And just one step at a time, it took me... The first documentary that I produced as a result was called Megiddo, The March to Armageddon, Bible Prophecy in the New World Order, hmm. where we talk about uh, we, we show an outline of, of prophecy. We show people places in the Bible. This was a thing for me. It was very difficult to understand at first why people were saying this new world order would be the kingdom of Antichrist and where are they getting that in the Bible and so on. I was asking all of these specific questions. 